Hello and welcome to a new vlog. I'm beginning to get a little bit excited about the kitchen. I had the guys here templating today and we're going to jump back in time and chat to them. I didn't have time to chat to you properly before they came so we're going to jump back in time, chat to them and then we're going to come back into my kitchen. So I've got Rob here and Trevor from Evo Tops who have come to measure up for the kitchen worktop, which is, seems to be a, it's a really big day. We've been waiting <laughs> for this for a yeah. while. And Chas, will you talk to everybody a bit about how it works and why you, you do it differently? Because this bit of kit is amazing. So it could like laser cut the worktop. Yeah, sort of, almost. Fit, almost, <laughs> will you tell us? Sure. Yeah, so it's basically a, it's a it's like a digital tape measure so it, it it measures the room and it captures all the information and then we can turn that into a drawing straight away which is really cool so then we can see it straight away on a screen make yeah. sure we're happy with it you're happy with it we can put all the radiuses and all that kind of stuff in that you need to know about yeah um, but you can see it before we leave the site and then we can take it back it gets downloaded automatically and ends up in our factory and they do the magic there and turn it into one of the top. And then it's bought and installed and... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we can break it in pieces so we can get into smaller places, Not so much, that's not a problem. And then we seamlessly join it together on site. It's a really cool material. Yeah, and can we talk a bit about sure. the material? The material itself, yeah. yeah. It's quite heavy. It is really heavy. So... What, you, no problem, I'm going to carry on. Good, good. Um, so yeah, what we've got is, uh, it's basically an acrylic material, it's Corian, so uh, a kind of fairly generic name for the actual material itself. So within the material, um, we have done something quite clever with it. And basically what we've done is we've worked with uh, DuPont and their UK distributor, who, um, who DuPont make Corian material. Um, they are on a sustainability trajectory, like everybody, but... Yeah. Um, they they really have got lots of waste that they're trying to get find a home for yeah. rather than send it to landfill. Um, we figured out technically, Trevor being the brains behind that, figured out that we could actually use their waste material to create brand new worktops. I love it. So the top of the worktop that everybody will see, which will sit and um, people can enjoy as part of their kitchen is brand new virgin sheet and underneath will be the waste material supplied directly from DuPont. Um, we estimate somewhere in the region of 40 plus percent of the product will be material that would have gone into um, landfill, which uh, could be hundreds of tons a year by the way it's going. Yeah, so. which is amazing. And yeah. you don't know this Rob, yeah. but my mum used to work for DuPont, and Did I was actually yeah. goosebumps talking about it. Oh my goodness, yeah. Mum worked for them in yeah. the 70s oh, wow. okay. um, with two of her friends, Pauline, who is my godmother, and Dorothy, um, who is my brother's. And yeah. Dorothy's still alive, and yeah. she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. And Mum, Mum met these two other wonderful women okay. working at DuPont in the 70s. Wow. And I think one thing that was Mum's real bugbear was... Um, so my father was massively into the environment yep. and uh, environmentally friendly and sustainable things and mum always hated the fact that she had worked for DuPont, yeah, a packaging yeah, yeah. company creating all this waste. Yep. And so I think the reason why I've got goosebumps is she would be so happy to mm -hmm. know that this is what's Something happening positive. to... Yeah. I mean, she was she loved Corian, she was really passionate about it. We yeah. had always had Corian in our kitchens at home. and. This would make her very excited yeah. because of her sort of environmental uh, change with my yeah, yeah, father yeah. Uh, throughout the That's really good so to it's hear. It's really, really exciting. Because the really interesting thing with that, it's really good to hear, is because when we presented it to DuPont, mm -hmm. we sat down and we said, we've got this idea, have you got any waste? It, they literally said, can we have exclusivity? Um, yeah, as soon so as to we... making these changes is really, exactly. really positive. Exactly. So, um, so they're fully behind it. We're actually allowed to use um, Created with Corian, uh, which is kind of a rare thing that they allow people to use Corian associated with their own product. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so they are very supportive. Hopefully we'll get it on their website fairly soon as well, which will be really yeah. big for us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea being that it has all the properties of Corian. So if anybody's got experience of Corian in terms of it's non-porous, it's hygienic, uh, critically important right now is the fact that it's got no silica in it. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that's becoming quite an... Uh, um, a sensitive issue in terms of the quartz products out in the marketplace. Yeah, I um, yeah. So yeah, so they they they're very supportive, and as we say, that all the benefits and features of Corian are within our Evo Tops product. Yeah. But it's just got that sustainability uh, advance that um, yeah. there's nothing out on the market like this at the moment at all. Yeah. So well, that's great. It's very exciting. It's very exciting to be having it here in my kitchen. So. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, we'll be back in a couple of weeks' couple time of weeks, yeah. sharing the kitchen, and then and then of course you guys are going to see me using it over over the coming months and years and however long we're here for. So Great. guys, thanks very much for yeah, thank coming you. and chatting to us. Thanks, about so it's beginning to get pretty exciting. Such a great meeting with Trevor and Rob talking about the kitchen and then measuring up the template. Now Dan has made me a temporary worktop out of MDF. So we can use this space and it's it's very exciting. I've just come back from the school run and the post office. I've had a flurry of orders which has been amazing so a huge thank you for those. I've come back and I've just had like a moment of oh it's beginning to feel real and I can now begin to envisage how this space is going to work. Like this is the size of the worktop. Pretty much actually it's a little bit a little bit deeper on this side, but I can get like a rough idea and work out in my head how it is gonna work, which is super, super exciting. Now the dishwasher that arrived is damaged, which is the disappointing part. So curries have got a replacement coming in a week's time. So that is just going to sit there until they come and pick it up and deliver the other one. It, uh, the sides are damaged and when Dan opened the packaging to fit it, so in theory we would have had a dishwasher today, which would have answered a lot of my prayers because washing up in through there, that hand basin, it's kind of tricky. But anyway, I've got to be patient for a little bit longer and yeah, so frustrating but as with everything it's a few steps forward and a few steps back and it's about having a gracious heart and not getting bothered about it you know it's having a positive can-do attitude and that's okay we're just going to ignore that monstrosity for a week but it is beginning to feel really real and really exciting we are actually about to head off for part of the weekend to go to Burley Horse Trials so Coco hasn't ever been to Burley and it hasn't ever really worked with school, like back to school and what have you, but we thought we would do it. We thought we would go and so that is what we're doing. So we're about to head off. I have just packed. I was just hanging out with washing and I thought, do you know what? I can see how this kitchen's gonna work. I'm gonna come and chat to you guys. Um, so we're about to head off to Burley. We're staying in an Airbnb tonight and then we'll be back. It is a bit tricky in here without, a kitchen sink without a dishwasher. I have worktops, I have an Arga. So, you know, it's not impossible, but I've just been eating really badly. I think I've put on a few kilos. I've been having, you know, biscuits and chocolates and things like that. So, I'm really looking forward to having a, hang on, let me just hang that there, to having a useful kitchen where I can make lovely home-cooked things and what have you. We had our first um, meal on our laps last night because we haven't got a kitchen table at the moment. But now they've templated. Now Dan's, Dan has done the majority of it. I can rejig this space, which I'm going to do on Sunday. I'm going to bring the kitchen table back in here and that is going to make life a lot easier because it's currently in the sitting room. And so we've now got like two rooms that are in disarray and only one kind of room that's functional. So it will make life a lot easier once I've got the table back in here and we can just get it a little bit more set up. It's quite unsettling when 
things are at odds and you don't know where anything is. So I need to kind of get it, it get this space in order. So that is going to be next week's mission. But let's head to Bali. This will be Fearless W, Nicole Mills. This is at the web and do it well out of the uh, water there through the double of angle brushes coming out there. Sorry. So, uh, so excuse me, the two big outfits out there. It is Nicole Mills who went through the dry hatchery very nicely well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. and a bank from Rail the Ditch and then pretty ugly from B to C as well. Flags flying everywhere, Andrew Heffernan. Sandwich, we've yes. got a side up. They get cheese and ham in there, yeah, not too Yeah, bad. we've got a side up. Got a side up. Yeah, you get your piece of bacon fried, you put yeah. it on the bottom, flip it over the top. Oh, I see, so you, you're sandwich effectively in. sandwiched yeah. sandwich. Yeah, you can stick it on your swimming plate. How long will that take? About five minutes each Five minutes. Each each so you still flip it over? Yeah. Flip it over. On the simmering? On the simmering. Glad we're there. Like each. Yeah. Yeah. See my answers. What's wrong for you? We can sit on the hand tie back. You can't get your hands out like that. Put your hands at the back and tell them as well. You can't get your hands out like that. You can't get your hands out like that. You can't get your hands out like that. Coco and I are doing a little bit of shopping and we're on the Natalie dress stand. Hang on, I'm tripping over here. And they've got these really, really cozy fleeces with the neon. And Coco is just trying on because the winter with horses can be pretty brutal. So you need to be cozy. And these are the coziest fleeces with the best pockets. So you can get, you know, you can put lots in there, you can get cozy, you're not going to lose your phone and say, stay. Super snugly. So we've had the most amazing day at Burley. I've forgotten how much I love Burley. It, I think, has to be my absolute favourite horse trials. It's got such a great atmosphere and we love it. Although I had a slightly stressful morning and I'm a little bit hot because just, I don't know, got hot and flustered. Um, I lost sign. So we were queuing up to get some food. He was adamant he was going to have a bacon. What did you want, a bacon butty? Something like that. Something like yeah. that. Anyway, he found his bacon butty and then he found himself in the main, like, well, not the main arena, the house arena, watching the start and the finish. We didn't think of looking for him in there and the phones don't work. So I think it took an hour, an hour and a half, something like that, with me getting a little bit, a little bit anxious about his whereabouts. Anyway, we then went and walked the course and um, watched the fences and then just did a little bit of shopping, bumped into lots of people. Um, so lovely to meet Elizabeth, who um, was telling us how to cook. She's got the same arga as us, the dual control. She was talking about how to do a toasty with Baker Glide on the top, and uh, she did a little demo with size. That was so gorgeous to meet her, and it's just been a really, really lovely, fun day. Um, great coming up last night, and now we're going to head back to Sussex get something to eat en route home and 
hopefully not be home too late. Can you do a trot? In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> We have just managed to squeeze in an afternoon hack off school. Just beginning to get dark. It's so lovely to be out with Coco. She's uh, behind me, you can just about see her. Um, at, uh, it's one of the joys of living where we are. We don't, haven't seen, in fact, we haven't even seen a person. <laughs> it's, just, it's just been the two of us. And it's much nicer wearing my hat and my gloves. Yesterday I rode Santana unexpectedly for the first time. Tintin said to me, have you ever ridden her? And I said, no, I'm too scared. And he said, right, come on then. I had to put Coco's sweaty, sweaty hat on and her sweaty gloves. But actually it was really fun. And then actually the heavens opened and I got soaking wet. So it's nice to not have a sweaty hat on this evening. But the goat's making noise, which has made Colin a little sprightly. So I'm going to chat to you later on. I didn't continue chatting to you last night because Colin was a bit spooked by the goats being noisy. And uh, he was a little bit of a handful. And then it was rapidly getting dark. Time for then supper and homework and all that, all that jazz. And actually I had a video I needed to edit last night that's going out today. So I cracked on with that. Now I am up early, size away, and I thought I'm going to get a good dog walk in before the school run. The plumber is coming back today and I think the water might be turned off. So I also need to wash my hair. I've currently got rosemary oil in my hair. My hair is the first thing to play up when things are stressful. And actually it's got quite thin, um, I think, because of the move stress. So um, I'm using rosemary oil at the moment. I can talk to you more about that if you're interested, but I just just noticed it's feeling a little bit thin and thought that I would give it a boost with rosemary oil. I actually couldn't find the rosemary oil for a little while, but I've located it and um, I just apply it at night. I pop a towel on my pillow and then go to sleep and wash it out in the morning. That's that's how I do it. Everyone has like a slightly different way. But actually, in the past, I found rosemary oil really, really helpful for regrowth. So that's what I've done. So I'm going to give you a quick update because I've been useless. We, uh, I think I lost all oh, this deer in front of me. Wow. I'll turn you around if I see any more. Um, I think I last properly chatted to you. Um, leaving, leaving Burley, we had the most amazing time and then following day 
Simon and I just spent getting the house ready, well not ready, <laughs> moving the temporary kitchen from the sitting room back into the kitchen, although it's still slightly temporary, can't completely get it all set up, but um, we just got the table back in there. It's quite funny actually, the dogs are, I think they can smell the deer that's over there somewhere. Little Florence, I've got Penny on lead because she's just naughty. And I do not need the stress of her disappearing this morning. Anyhow, um, we had one night last week, we had our supper on our laps and all of us sat there feeling quite uncomfortable. I am really old fashioned. I love to lay the table. Like it doesn't have to be beautifully laid with linens and everything every night, but I like to make a little bit of an effort. We sit down at the table and we talk. And because the table was in the other room with all the stuff on it, there was nowhere to actually sit apart from outside and the weather has turned a bit. So we found ourselves sat in the sitting room. We didn't even have trays with our food on our laps. It's not good for the digestion guys at all. So hang on, I'm going through a gate. So we spent Sunday getting the table, not the whole day on Sunday, the table back into the kitchen so we could at least sit down and be a little bit more civilized. We also went back to Tintin's for Coco to have a lesson. She's much improved. Um, Tintin has changed her a bit and, um, you know, just done a little bit of schooling with her. Coco had a really great lesson. And Tintin said to me, um, Charlie, do you ride her? And I was like, no, 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 don't be silly. No, no, no. Gone are those days of me being brave. And he said, come on, she's lovely to ride. She's not going to do anything. And, you know, actually the realisation that I am going to need to start to ride her during the week when the light isn't good enough for us to ride after school. And it's probably not really enough time to ride before school. So I, actually, I am going to have to ride her. Um, so let's do this now if I'm going to do it. So I just rode my wellies, my jeans. Oh, there's another deer. Hang on. Lola? Lola? I turn you around. It had disappeared. I'm sorry. But it's such a beautiful sight. And that's what's so lovely about getting up. It's currently mm, 6.40 in the morning and everything's coming alive. I had the cuckoo earlier. I've seen a couple of deer and it's just a magical time to be out. The early bird catches the worm. Um, and yeah, so Tintin was like, come on. You put Coco's hat on, put her gloves on. They were so sweaty, it was pretty revolting. At least it's my daughter and I love her dearly. So I popped them on, jumped on Santana. And actually she was amazing. She was so beautiful to ride. I cantered on both reins. I have a little bit of a nervous thing about cantering because I shattered my shoulder blade, gosh, 10 years ago now, trying a horse to buy cantering around a field. In fact, the field just behind us here is where I went splat. And then, then I had another kind of couple of scary moments where I didn't fall off, but near misses, trying other horses. And then a year after the shoulder, I did my leg, cantering a horse with a view to buying it. And I didn't fall off, I actually jumped off and the ground was uneven and my ankle turned and it ricocheted up and broke the bottom of my knee. So I did my ankle and my knee in one foul swoop and that was really foolish but I was so nervous, it's like a nervous reaction, just autopilot, get, at, get me off here. I think, you know, going back from the shoulder because that horse was determined to get me off, there was no hanging on, he was not going to stop bucking until I had I'd gone and I was side saddle and he bolted and was just fly bucking. And so I think like natural instinct kicks in, it's like jump off. I was like, no, relax, breathe, chill out. This is fine. You're in an arena with an Olympic rider on a lovely horse. You've watched your daughter ride for the last year, pull yourself together and get on with it. And then it started to pee with rain. So it got absolutely wet through. So I don't know why we've been worrying about the sweat. So um, that was that. And then we got home and juggled furniture around, read the Sunday papers, and then I embarked on quite a lot of mucking out because I hadn't 
I, I meant to do it last week. I, I need to do it every single day. But sometimes there are days when it just doesn't happen. And I'd had a few of those days in a row and then the weather turned and it was just torrential rain. So I had like six days worth of mucking, up, mucking out to catch up on and actually I haven't completely finished it. Um, and rather than finishing it yesterday, I decided to ride with Coco instead. And then we just enjoyed a relaxed Sunday evening at home, which is perfect. And yesterday was just one of those days which you plan out in your head, like this is gonna happen then, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And it just goes, yeah, um, <laughs> not quite to plan. So I had a lovely, lovely flurry of orders since I posted uh, on my website my paisleys those have been so popular an enormous thank you for your orders and then pre-ordering my diary i've got the canvas aprons they're amazing they've got four pockets they are really like <laughs> heavy duty canvas but they are really good thickness they are you know for men for women whoever Sai so will be wearing his a lot they're just brilliant and you can, you know, use them for all sorts of, all, all sorts of things, not just cookery. I love an apron. Uh, I mean business when I have my apron on. So I'm very pleased with those. And then the tote bags as well. So thank you for your orders. So I spent from yesterday morning, well, the plan was to spend yesterday morning wrapping up the rest of the orders that hadn't gone out on Friday. And going, I was meeting um, a fellow content creator who lives nearby and I was going to post my orders, meet her, come back, film a video. However, <laughs> plumber arrived to plumb in the shepherd's hut, finally, which is really exciting. Hang on, I'm going to swap hands because my shoulder was aching. Um, to plumb in the shepherd's hut. To, we're actually putting in a new shower, or a shower, not even a new shower, a shower in one of the bathrooms, just above the bath so like when you know we're not redoing the bathroom or anything but we are putting in shower and we are changing the tiles and he arrived to start doing that it was very noisy and then so I, I went out met met lovely Lucy posted the orders that I had done came back and the gardening guys had turned up they um are recommended to us by our landlord because the box hedges had box caterpillar and it wasn't going to survive. And actually they've sprayed and they've salvaged the majority of it, which is very, very exciting. And I'm just going to call Lola back. Lola, heel. Good girl. Good girl. There she is. Um, so, so I had, they said, I actually, I booked them in to come and cut the box. There's quite a lot of box in the garden. There's also quite a lot of yew. So they were coming to cut the yew. And when I got back from meeting Lucy, they were there cutting the yew and I was about to start filming. I mean, there was absolutely no way I could film anything because it was unbelievably noisy. And I thought that they'd finish at like three o'clock. Oh no, 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 they kept going. And then just as they were about to leave, Sai arrived, came home, wanted to chat about stuff. So it was just one of those days. Anyway, I'm going to sit down with you today and chat through what I got at Burley. Um, I didn't go crazy, but I did find a new brand, which I'm really excited about. And so, and I've got a few bits to share with you. So I'm going to do that when we're back at the house. Well, not, um, yeah. So another reason for getting up early and walking the dogs is I need to wash my hair before the plumber comes back today and turns the water off. And I'm going up to London this afternoon because Trini has opened a permanent store on the King's Road and invited me to the opening, which is unbelievably exciting. I have no idea what I'm going to wear. It's like between seasons. The last time I saw Trini, she was like in sequins and sparkling. I don't want to get too dressed up, but at the same time, I want to make a little bit of an effort. And most of my autumn clothes 
are currently in store in Simon's office. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to wear. So I need to figure that one out. Um, but I thought I'd better get my hair washed and done before the school run in case it's another day like yesterday and um, no water and a lot of noise. Um, yeah, there's a, that's a lot of umming and ahhing, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my walk. wanted to just catch up with you on all of that jazz. And we will speak later when hopefully I'm looking a little bit more presentable. I haven't got my hair covered in oil and scraped back. I didn't finish telling you about why I think it's so important to sit around the table. So I was about to go off on a spiel about that. But I do think that this is really important. And I was talking to my friend about it yesterday. And I was like, I know we're unusual. But it is so important to sit down at least once a day at a table and talk with whoever it is that lives with you if you if you live with other people and to not have the TV on and to keep phones not at the table and over your meal just chat to one another and I that is something that we do every single day and it felt so odd us sitting on the sofas with our food on our laps. It was alien to us and it got me thinking that actually that is a lot of people's normal and whilst there's nothing wrong with it at all, it is so much better for you, for your digestion, for like communication within a family to sit together, no devices, TV off and just talk. Talk about how your day was, talk about you know, whatever it might be. Um, I, I, I just think it is so important for, for families to do that, at least, you know, even if it's a Sunday roast once a week, but if you can do it every day, I do think it is really important. So I just wanted to share that with you. I know it's old fashioned. I know some of you might think it's completely crazy, but I do think it is, as I've said a couple of times now, very, very important. So I just thought I'd talk about it because, um, I think communication within a family is absolutely key. And if you communicate things, you know, even if it's something that's bothering you, if you communicate it early on before it becomes a big deal, it doesn't become a big deal. Whereas often we brush things under the carpet, we pretend it's fine and actually it's not. And then it becomes a big thing. And then sometimes those things can become irreparable things. But if you communicate about stuff, early on it doesn't go into the big stuff and that's what Simon and I have always done throughout our marriage is if something little that's bothering us we will talk about it if he says something that I don't agree with I won't just sit there and take it I'll be like no actually darling that's not how I see it, it doesn't need to be an argument I just say you know that's not how that's not how it was meant that was not how it was, uh, it was supposed to be um whatever it might be but guys, communication is key. That's my words, word of wisdom early this morning. And now I need to get ready. I've got an hour before the school run to shower, hair, makeup, and most importantly, some breakfast. They're back, hedge cutting. So actually I'm not gonna chat to you for very long now because it's a little bit chaotic, but I need to figure out what I'm wearing for London. I am actually going up earlier than I thought. I'm going to have acupuncture with Adrian because I've got to sort, I've got to sort my hair out. And I actually thought um, with, with everything that's been going on, it would do me the world of good to go and have an acupuncture session. So that is what I'm doing. So I'm going to leave um, actually in about 15 minutes. I just need to figure out what I'm wearing. I actually think I'm going to wear jeans. And um, this blouse, which is from Orally, it's just a sort of champagne colour blouse with my by cat navy jacket on the top. I haven't tried it on. I'm wearing it with jeans and then this pair of heels because the weather's kind of funny. I haven't packed my summer clothes away. Well, I've started to pack my summer clothes away. I've got a pile, but I need to do the wardrobe swap over. Um, but... I need to do a lot of stuff, so I don't know when that's going to happen, but quickly, it doesn't sound too noisy at the moment. I've got two people, two people today, so there's two hedge cutters going. Hopefully they'll be done quickly and then I can chat to you probably tomorrow. But there's a couple of 
things that have arrived. So Instagram, like a uh, For You page, I think that's what it's called, served me this denim blouse and I clicked on it, realised, I, like I saw this pretty girl wearing this blouse and I um, saw the blouse and I was like, wow, that is totally me. And I then ordered it, which is very exciting. I got the most lovely card. So the company is called Willowbrook. Dear Charlotte, thank you so much for your lovely order because I'm Charlotte when I'm like when I pay for stuff. Um, I'm so pleased you've discovered my little business. Enjoy your shirt. It's been incredibly popular. Sophie. So it's um, Willowbrook underscore online. And I haven't tried it on yet, but denim with a frill with a ruffle and I just thought that that was absolutely gorgeous so that has arrived today which I will um, try on properly and then I've got a delivery from Salt House so Anna knew that my tan loafers have been literally <laughs> battered I wore them every day of our move. In fact, for a while I lost my other shoes and I had to uh, message the girls that helped me back um, to say, where are my shoes? Because I couldn't find any. So Anna has really kindly sent me a new pair of tan loafers. So now I've got a smart pair for when I actually want to go out and not look like a complete nut scruff bag. Um, and then I've got the other pair. And I was looking like a complete and utter, utter scruff bag yesterday. And Piri, who's worked for us forever, I was like, can I go out like this to meet somebody? She was like, no, 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 Charlie, you need to go and change. So I put a dress on because I was wearing scruffy old jeans and like a top that I wear for riding. So I've got quite scruffy with me, trying to kind of make a little bit of an effort so very nice thank you Anna so much but this is the exciting part I love a salt house delivery I mentioned this was coming last week navy oh look I'm wearing the green and it wasn't even planned I didn't know it was arriving today so with the gold zip I actually wear a medium I've got quite big boobs so I, um, the small is just a bit tight. So Coco has got the small in this one. She's desperate to have the cream one. She loves it so much, she pinches mine. But now they've got it in navy. And I have to say, I don't know whether navy is my more favorite color than green, but it's pretty close. It was navy for many years. I know Coco's gonna see this and she's gonna want one too because navy is definitely her favorite color. So a huge thank you to Anna at Salt House. Now I have my discount code, Charlie Gray, which gives you um, an exclusive discount off everything at Salt House. So make sure you use that if you want to purchase anything. I am today wearing my Salt House belt. I'm actually wearing slippers and my Salt House loafer. I pretty much live in Salt House. So I now need to try my outfit on for London and see whether it's gonna work. I hope it's gonna work. I might actually wear a different shirt and change because I've got acupuncture. I don't wanna be wearing beautiful orally blouse. <laughs> I've got needles poked in me. And then I've got a meeting before the launch of Trinity Shop. I mean, there is a real pinch me moment that I get invited to do these things. It really is sort of mind blowing. <laughs> Slightly frazzled, overtired mother in Sussex who, still kind of in chaos, probably going to be in chaos for a little bit longer. Although tomorrow is a house sorting day. I want to swap my wardrobe out. It's a bit hard, like has the weather changed or are we going to have an Indian summer? That is the question. Do I, I, I'm going to swap out like my high season, like height of summer stuff, definitely. Um, I don't have space to keep stuff and I do need to have a bit of a sort out of my room because yeah anyhow right stop waffling and get changes just very quickly pop this on to show you obviously it needs to be ironed but I love it it is perfect and I'm thrilled with it I want to show you the other stuff have I got time I've really quickly got time to show you what I got at Burley well 
half of it, not all of it. I'll show you what's up here. So this is a moth bag, an anti-moth bag. And this is Jam Industrial. I'm gonna leave them tagged down below. I discovered them on TikTok. Saw, they like posted TikTok about going to Burley. I then went onto their website and I was like, wow, beautiful, beautiful things. I'm gonna go and find them. And I found them, they were so lovely. And this is what I bought. Now I have got, and many of you might recognize this, I have got one that is very similar to this, which I bought from another company last year. It hasn't worn that brilliantly, but I lived in it. But this one is a little bit more fitted. So I'm just gonna to have to imagine that this blouse has been ironed. I actually thought I bought this, on the way back from Burley because that's when I saw it but I just think that I love the sort of turtleneck with the ruffle and just actually with the shirt hanging out and I'll probably wear the other one still but this is just a smarter more fitted option and you can wear the neck up but the other one has gone like really bobbly and a bit scruffy but I lived in it last year you'll probably remember it, but I also thought this with just a white top underneath, absolutely perfect. And then the other top I got, and this is the other knit. So it's got this pop of red, which you can either have like rolled down or rolled up. And then it has got, let me move back a little bit, a navy trim, the red on the cuffs. It's cotton, but really good for layering. And I just thought it was fun, it was different, it was lovely having a pop of red and just a really, really lovely brand. They had so many gorgeous pieces. Um, they do wool, I think it's a cashmere, I'm not sure, it's a cashmere mix. Feels gorgeous, in fact, the navy. This one is the same blend, I think. Um, yeah, cashmere, 30% cashmere, 70% lamb's wool. So that is a really good combo because it's lovely and soft, but not crazy money. Um, so that is that one, and that is that one. Now I need to try on my outfit for London and see whether it works. So not only have we got the hedge cutting guys, we've also got lovely Nathan, who's in the airing cupboard behind. And this is a new piece of furniture, which I haven't shared with you properly, but I will do, I promise. I haven't started up yet. This is my look for this evening. Poor Nathan, I had to ask his advice. I haven't been anywhere smart for ages. So I am just going with jeans. And then these heels, which are old from Jigsaw, and actually I bought them pre-loved. My favorite navy by Cat Coat. Um, it's a French brand. I didn't realize when I bought it that you'd have to pay like customs, whatever. So it ended up being an investment piece. And then this is an orally champagne blouse. I'm going with a cream handbag and I've gone with just a neutral peach belt. I had such a challenge to get these clothes out of the office because they were in the far corner. All of like my autumn winter stuff went there when we moved and they were in the far, far corner and I literally had to climb over to get them out. But I'm gonna head to London Go and see Adrian, I'm actually gonna take this off. I'm gonna put flats on, regular shirt, cardigan, and just go super cash. And then I'm gonna change when I'm up in London. I have got a meeting at the Sloan Club so I can change there easily. And I just wanna be comfy. And if I rock up for Adrian like this, he's gonna wonder what's going on. But anyway, um, I'll chat to you. I've just popped you up on the dashboard. I've just had my point with Adrian. Oh my goodness, he's amazing. He's so amazing. And it's peeing with rain and I haven't got an umbrella, which is a little bit annoying. I don't think Simon's got an umbrella in his car. I keep one in mine, but I don't think he's got one. Um, I haven't been to see Adrian. So Adrian is my acupuncturist. He's based in London. I'm gonna leave his details linked down below because he is amazing. He's such an amazing guy. And I foolishly haven't been to see him since December. For those of you that have been here for a while will know back in October last year I went for a mammogram and I ended up needing to have a biopsy and then 
I had a massage, I think it was like six weeks later after the biopsy and I ended up with a hematoma in my breast that they had done the, the biopsy on from having a back massage. I think I hadn't healed enough and I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome which affects my collagen makeup like it affects so many things in so many different weird ways and obviously the healing process had taken longer for me from the biopsy and it triggered a hematoma which is was incredibly painful um and adrian said no problem i can drain it and he literally put needles into me my boob went black and blue i haven't had a problem and i haven't been back to see him since and that was in december and this year has been like <laughs> so ridiculously stressful i haven't had time to come and see him which i'm really cross with myself actually for not making the time because i'm always like you know you need to look after yourself because if you don't look after yourself then you can't look after the rest of the family i feel like i have been in survival mode literally since we made the decision to sell the house, to downsize, to move where we have. Then dad died and then Coco unhappy at school and then the actual moving process. It's been like one thing after another and Adrian was like, you were frazzled when I saw you in December and now you've been through all of this. And I was like, I know. And I said, but Adrian in a weird way, Everything that's, that's happened is a blessing. And I know that might sound crackers, but I love where we live. I love the fact that life is easier. It's less stressful. We've got more to look after. I don't have the B&B &B anymore. Yes, we're still in chaos. You know, I'm processing dad dying. I actually, I haven't talked to you properly or I haven't shown you this ring. This I bought like in memory of dad. I bought it from Augustus Jewels. I had my event there and in June and I saw this ring and I tried it on and I thought it was just beautiful and it's an aquamarine. I think it's an aquamarine or blue topaz. I can't actually remember. I have to look it up. Um, and I just thought it was so beautiful. And so that is a bit of dad on me, with me. I'm wearing it all the time at the moment. Um, literally sort of since it arrived I put it on and I haven't actually taken it off I've got quite big knuckles but tiny things that actually it's not that easy to get on and off but once it's on pl in place it fits well but I am wearing it the whole time and I didn't have an easy relationship with dad but this I don't know it's offering a bit of comfort and I've got mum this is mum's necklace these are the children's initials and I've got like mum here <laughs> dad here um and sort of guiding me through this time and I just love where we live. Like this morning on my walk I just feel so blessed that we're there. I'm welling up and I said to Adrian I know it's been like the most stressful like really challenging but I'm coming out the other side and now I'm here seeing you to get to get you to fix me. Probably should have come throughout the process but I couldn't add an extra factor in I just was in survival mode I just had to kind of go 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 and now I can process my father's death I can now process selling our home um although I feel like I have processed that I feel really um I, in some ways it's a relief and and I Simon and I get it um and yeah i feel i feel a lot lighter and i feel a lot happier and i feel a lot less stressed um a lot less stressed <laughs> it, could, it, it couldn't get oh, apart from bad health but um adrian said to me i want you to eat well and and try and sleep and i have actually been sleeping a lot better my hair i talked to you about that this morning you know that's a sign of of you know stress and stuff um and I actually cooked, which is why probably another reason why I didn't have that much time to talk to you at home and get ready because I left it to the last minute. I Coco has been craving her mince with vegetables. It's called my Oriental mince. I, I call it that. I've called it that for years. And it's got broccoli, 
red and green pepper, courgette, shallot, um, sometimes I put carrot in there, it's got all sorts of things, and mince. And, it's, and then I add some oyster sauce and some sake and then serve it with rice. She actually loves it with a wrap and things like that. And she's been asking for it, but because of the lack of kitchen, it's been hard to create it. But now I've got like temporary worktops and an aga, hell I can cook it. Yeah, we can do it. So this morning I, um, I dropped her at school, went to the office to find my clothes, went to the village shop to post orders and they had mincer, they had everything I needed. So I thought I'm gonna cook that for her so she could have a lovely meal when she gets home. And I got lunch before I go. So I did that and it was just really lovely to be in the kitchen um, cooking, <laughs> like temporary kitchen. Um, but it's well, not temporary kitchen, like half a kitchen, part of a kitchen, but it's such a lovely space. And I just was listening to my audio book cooking away while the guys were cutting the hedges and the, Nathan the plumber is such a lovely chap and I do I'm feeling good I'm feeling excited I'm feeling really excited but it was really good to see Adrian I actually went into a really deep sleep for like 30 minutes when he opened the door I, I woke up with a jolt but um he really is a miracle worker so I'm really pleased I've come to see him I've got an appointment booked for next week I actually have booked an appointment for Sai. I haven't even checked whether he's free but when I said to him I said to him driving back from Scotland last week I really want to go and see Adrian he was like I want to come too can, can we book an appointment together he's actually Simon's been up in Birmingham for some food food festival food show thing which I probably should have really gone with him um, but somebody needed to do the school run and look after the animals. Um, uh, so I've just come alone because I'm, you know, in London anyway this evening and I just called up and said, is there an appointment? And they squidged me in. I threw my jumper on because I'm just, it's very autumnal. I don't think we're going to be having an Indian summer, guys, but I hope, I hope we are. It's just wet. It's just quite cold. It's quite miserable. This is H&M. Uh, Oxford shirt. If it's still available, I'll leave it linked, but they do come in and out of stock. But anyway, I've been waffling to you for like eight minutes, so I need to get going. Head over to Chelsea and um, I've got a meeting first. I think I mentioned that to you and then I've got the launch. So I've got my clothes in the back. I've got my pony club. I think it says pony club mum back from um, Harriet. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. Pony club stuff. <laughs> I thought that would be perfect. <laughs> Got my bits, my makeup bag in there um, to get glammed up for uh, the event this evening. And so I've just done a quick car change. I could have gone into the Sloan Club. I had my meeting in there, which was really lovely. I actually had something to eat as well because I don't want to eat rubbish. I'm trying to eat better food um, having made terrible decisions during the move and have been reaching for junk and goodness knows what and just feeling grim for it and Adrian actually said you know you need to eat eat really well um, so I had a really really lovely um, salad with chicken and avocado in the Sloan Club and then I came to the car to do a little bit of work I could have done my work in there but I just wanted just to sit in the car which is parked literally across the road and then I thought I'm so comfy here I've got my heated seat on because it's pretty grey and gloomy out there and I've been listening to my audiobook while getting ready so I've done my makeup literally like in hang on how <coughs> sneezing in the mirror I have tried to do something kind of with my hair I've used a bit of um dry shampoo what have I used um I love these from living proof um the dry volume uh texture spray and then i used a little bit of um the dry shampoo i washed my hair this morning you saw how greasy it was first thing but actually i don't know how well i washed it you know when you're washing your hair in the bath and you're using a shower head with not very good water pressure it just felt like it i don't know sorry and now i've got an itchy nose um it just felt like it had a little bit of oil um rosemary oil still in there 
So I use some dry shampoo to mask because I don't want to look like I've got greasy hair. I have done, in fact, I might put a tiny bit more. Is my blusher okay? Does it need a little bit more? Um, we might go a little bit more. I have put Emily, Trini's Emily, on my lips. And I have put Victory on my... Um, on my eyes i haven't gone in with a heavy eye i've just literally just put a little a little tiny bit and um a tiny bit of line to define um eye liner which is somewhere in here we're not gonna find it now this one here love it love it love it um this is in the chantal bronze shimmer great color I put a bit of that on my normal Swede mascara, the Trini Solar Bronzer, and Pia on my cheeks, which I have been using all summer. And then, as I mentioned, Emily, she's here, and actually, she's going to come in my handbag with me. Emily on my lips. I love this. Look at that. And this is lip to cheek, so you can use it for like a sort of dewy. Maybe I'm not going to put it on now because it won't be too much. I've just put Pierre on. But just for like a little bit of a shimmery blusher on your cheeks. So clever. And I love the fact that they tell you what they do. Um, sheer shimmer, Emily. Lips, cheek. Brilliant. Trini, you're a genius. And I'm about to go to the launch. So I've just swapped and popped my Orly blouse on i don't know if um these are still available but they're gorgeous and then i've got my jacket that i tried on earlier and my shoes i need to swap my shoes so i'm wearing my blue velvet flat tans um and i've got these which i shared with you earlier i've just popped my insole in them so i'm comfy Luckily, it has stopped raining because Simon doesn't think that he has an umbrella in the boot of his car, which I need to rectify that. I have got my full to bursting flat lay makeup bag. I literally at home just threw everything in. I don't normally put my makeup brushes in, but I just was in such a hurry. I just threw them in. So that does come everywhere with me. And actually, I just keep it on my dressing table in this and it's just ready to go. I don't then need to kind of decamp stuff. It's just there. Um, I do keep my makeup brushes in a pot beside it and then I put them in the makeup brush holder when I'm traveling rather than in there but today I just grabbed it. Anyway we're going to pot her up and go to the launch of Trini's new shop. So she, it was a pop-up shop for, maybe it was over, I want to say the Chelsea Flower Show is when she opened it just as a like a temporary thing to trial it went really well so she's opening it as a permanent thing which I'm really excited about because the people that I've recommended to go to her studio which is now closed to have like a makeover have have given me really great feedback it's such a great concept and when I first encountered the Trini products, I was like, I don't know how to use them. Can you, can I come and show you? They were so welcoming and so lovely. And I use the products every single day. I love them, particularly the, the blushes and the bronzers and the eyeshadow and that line to define is my absolute favorite. It's got a built-in sharpener, can't go wrong. But I'm waffling. We need to go and enjoy the next <laughs> Well, I'm a little bit wet. I really could have done with an umbrella, but that was such an amazing evening. I'm actually now a little bit hot. Um, it was amazing. I can't believe that I was there. Hang on, let's just take this jacket off if I can. Hang on. Ooh. This is very, very, very unglamorous. Um, I, I was really brave as well. <laughs> Not very good at being brave, but I spotted Liz Earl, who was there. And Liz and I are talking at the um, Eat, Love, Nourish Fair. 
hopefully I've said that in the right order and I haven't even had a drink I've just stuck to water today um, or this evening but um, Liz is a guest speaker with me I mean I cannot believe I'm a guest speaker with Liz Arl. Um but she was so lovely I mean she had no idea who I was but she was really really kind she was really friendly she was really chatty and um, that was lovely lovely to meet her and some other gorgeous people Trini just looked a million dollars um, goodie bag of bits and pieces and Trini's just launched a lipstick just joyous high shine lipstick this is shade Maria I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to put it on in the dark in the car and I am slightly bedraggled but I'm gonna try this properly another day but it looks like it's gorgeous I love the weight of um, Trini's products and there's a few other bits and pieces in here but it's such such an amazing evening i can't quite believe that that i was there um what else have we got in here oh eye to eye eye shadow eye shade i don't know what color ah victory which i love so that is amazing because i use that all the time and then lip to cheek in vb hmm i haven't heard of this one so let's have a look um what is this? That looks like a really lovely kind of natural, actually probably perfect for this time of year rather than a pier, which is more my like spring summer colour. But the Trini London team are so friendly and so lovely and chatty and just gorgeous. So it's been really lovely. And then Trini London, um, the Energize Me. This is their moisturizer with niacinamide. And I actually love products with niacinamide. That The Mecca Cosmetica um, SPF that I have with niacinamide. I really love that. And I am actually, that's my kind of daily thing, but it's really important to use a moisturizer as well as an SPF. Use your like serum first or vitamin C, then a moisturizer, then your SPF. And this is a great uh, moisturizer. So a really, really lovely evening. Um, I am going to plug myself in to Audible, listen to my audiobook while I drive home. And I should be home, what's the time? should be home not crazy crazy late which is quite good and i want a cardigan do i need a cardigan i might put my jumper over my shoulders but i don't like driving in a jacket but such a lovely evening i can't quite believe that um that i was there i was just looking around elizabeth day i mean she was there i mean i just oh. I was too scared to go and talk to her. She's way too cool. But there were so many people. Um, and it was just a really, really fun evening with a lovely atmosphere. So I'm going to drive home happy. And um, yeah, I'll chat to you all tomorrow. So after the most amazing evening yesterday in London, today I have spent the day mucking out the horses and sorting out the house, packing away summer clothes and trying to get uh, a bit of order in our bedroom. And now I've bought Coco for an evening lesson with Tintin. We've just got enough daylight to do this at the moment. Um, and luckily it's not raining. It was when we were driving here. But there they are. And actually, when we were at Burley, and I haven't talked to you about this yet, I meant to, but there's so much noise going on with the hedge cutters. Um, we met a lovely Amanda from um, Equitex, and Coco's riding in one of their saddle pads. Now, I'll give you a close up. They're really, really beautiful um, saddle pads, and they're really, really good for the horses' backs. And um, I'll tell you more about them, um, not now, but, um, but, but I will um, probably in another vlog. We'll get up close and have a look at them and I'll, I'll talk to you about them because they are incredible and the technology behind them is, um, is, is amazing. Um, and it's all about looking after the horse's back and make sh making sure that it's really comfortable and um, not going to sort of be ruckledy and uncomfortable and um, nurture the horse's back because actually, you know, imagine having a saddle and then a rider bouncing around. You want to make sure that it's as comfy and as cushioning as possible. And it's in that technology that uh, Equitex are very, very clever at doing. So that is exciting. And um, oh, they're doing flying changes at the moment. I'll turn you around. Look up. Yeah, be strong in your core. Look up. Well done, really good. Keep the bend to the left. Up. 
Bend to the left. Keep the bend. Yes, really good. There, come from your plank to the black oxa. Plank to black oxa. So you collect. just started to rain. So I cleverly put his cap and coat in the car. I didn't. But isn't the saddle pad so beautiful? And it's brown velvet, which I think is just lovely, lovely, lovely with Santana. I'm so traditional. Coco's got her brown boots, her brown saddle pad, brown tack, and I just think they look stunning. And I just think it looks so classic and beautiful on Santana. Really, really elegant and lovely. So a um, big thank you for Equitex. Good morning. Forgive the washing machine in the background. The sun is shining, so I have gone into <laughs> Chinese laundry mode trying to get it dry. I love having a washing line. And actually, this, I'm about to go and hang out in the washing line. There's two armchairs from the sitting room. I have washed, well, I've washed one set of covers, but the second set is in the machine right now. I'm going to get them hopefully dry and back on the chairs today, and that will just be fresh and lovely because they haven't been washed for a little while. But uh, we had such a great lesson with Tintin yesterday. I say we, that's the word we. I didn't get back on Santa. <laughs> But Coca had such a great lesson and the difference between a week ago when we were there and it just wasn't great at all. We ended up leaving Santana for a bit of schooling with Tintin and then Coco rode with him on Sunday and then again today. First time with Equitex saddle pad. It is so beautiful. I will take you down to the tack room and show it to you properly, but I think this vlog is getting really long, so I'm sorry about that. Let me know if you like the long ones or prefer the shorter ones. I know, you know everyone's a bit different. Um, talking about hair actually <laughs> um bauer collective have sent shampoo and conditioner to try these are new products that they have just launched i am such a fan of the bauer collective i use all of their cleaning products their loo cleaner their um floor cleaner their um bathroom cleaner their lime scale remover their fabric um uh, laundry detergent and fabric softener I use the fabric softener really only for towels. I don't feel you need it, but it's just lovely and it smells divine. And now they have launched shampoo and conditioner and I'm talking quite a lot about hair in this week's vlog. Um, I don't know if Adrian's already made a difference, but I haven't noticed so much coming out when I've washed it, but I'm keen to try these. So these are rose and pink pepper reusable. So they come in these, you can order with these, so you refill, and then you can send these pouches back, they recycle them, which I just love that about the Bauer Collective. So these are um, essential oils, enriched, luxury, natural shampoo, leaves your hair feeling clean and your scalp deeply nourished. They're for all hair types, 99% naturally um, derived, ethically sourced, vegan ingredients, shampoo that is good for your hair and for the planet. So I'll keep you posted on what I think about that from the Bauer Collective. And I have a discount code with the Bauer Collective, so I will leave that on the screen. I also had another lovely delivery, talking to Adrian about eating well, nourishing my body with the right stuff, with the lack of like proper functioning kitchen at the moment. This is perfect timing from Freya. This is bro bone broth. They won the Great Taste Award in 2022. They have chicken, they have beef, 16% protein, 65 calories, 8% collagen um, in the chicken and the beef has 25 grams of protein, 110 calories, 18% collagen. Um, so, you know, the beef is better for you but it, you know either or very very good and you can I've been reading things about you know actually bone broth is just so 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 good for you yes absolutely you can make your own I normally make my own but at the moment sometimes we need to cut corners and this is a really really good alternative so this is a much healthier lunch than having a packet of crisps piece of fruit and a bar of chocolate which is what I've been doing in the middle 
little bit from time to time. So this is a much better option. So big thank you for Freya for sending that. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Now I need to go and get the washing on the line. I've got this big lot to go and hang out. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's vlog. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. I will be back next week with all sorts of more adventures and things that I've got up to. Thank you for tuning in. Have a super, super duper weekend and lots of love.